Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. So today I'm doing this video. I don't want to make noise. I'm doing this video in the morning. We have just woken up. <laughs> we have just woken up. And I want to show you somebody that was sleeping with mommy on mommy's be bedroom. I want to show you the person. I don't want to wake up the person. That's why I'm speaking on on low volume. But you remember yesterday night, those who watched, I posted a video of one of my beautiful foster daughters doing some makeup on me, removing my lipstick so that we could go to sleep. And then when it was time to sleep, she refused to go and sleep in her bed. <laughs> she refused to go and sleep in her bed. And she insisted she has to come and sleep in mommy's bed. In fact, she left my little tiny baby, our last boy, sleeping alone. <laughs> because the sleeping arrangement we have in the other bedroom. Now, when the big sister is in school, there are three of them and then our house manager. So the sleeping arrangement is because the bed is a bunk bed, is the double decker. So the two small ones sleep on the bottom one and the two big ones sleep on the upper one. So Miss Wald and Chief Justice sleep on the bottom one and then um, uh, our doctor together with the uh, house manager, they sleep on the top one. So. Our little tiny baby fell asleep and unfortunately she will wake up and find herself alone in the bed. <laughs> I would have loved to see her reaction. I don't know how. If I knew the time she's waking up, I would have recorded for you, but I might miss out on that one because she's in the other bedroom. I don't know what time she will wake up, but if I'm able to capture something, I will put it here. So I want you to show. I want to show you. You see what she's wearing? It is mommy's sweater. Because here it has been so hot. So, so hot. So hot. <laughs> so hot, yani. Waka mtu anasikia kulala bila nguo. But today, you see, I'm also wearing sweater on top of my my night, my night gear, you see? You see? I'm wearing a sweater. I had to wake up and go wear it because... It has rained. We thank God it has rained. It has rained so heavily. So heavily. So, she's turning herself. So, I thought like she's feeling cold and I got into my clothes and got her a big sweater, one of my sweaters, a big one. If she wake up, you'll see that sweater looks like a dress on her. And the reason I thought of recording this video is because she's awake. We are making noise. She's back to sleep. The reason why I I thought of doing this video is when I saw her on that sweater, it has taken me back to the year 2020. When I picked these girls from the slum. And I remember that day they came to my house in torn clothes, smelling, stinking, so dirty. Kids that would just look at them and feel like crying, you know. But I took them. I remember it was late at night. It was almost going to midnight, around 11.30 p.m. So when we got home, at that night, actually we were driving all the way with the windows rolled down. Imagine driving at night and it is cold. 
but we chose to withstand the cold withstand the cold because we could we couldn't put up the windows they were stinking so when we got to, to my home the first thing that i did i just instructed my house manager who was there that time to remove their clothes from the doorstep and uh, to remove their, their clothes from the doorstep and not to let them come in in those clothes and then straight to the bathroom the bathroom was their first stopover they were showered they were put on some baby jelly and then now after we showered them that's when I started thinking, oh my God, now they are clean, they are fresh. We don't have anything to put them on. Because remember me, my baby was a teenager then. She's big. She was actually 14, 14 years. Yeah, 14. So, and I've, I've taken care of that girl alone. I've only brought up her alone. <laughs> So in the house, I don't have any baby's clothes. I don't have any tiny clothes, any small clothes they can fit. So we got stranded for a minute. And then together we brainstormed and we thought, ah, it's at night, nobody's looking at them. Why not? Why not uh, put them, our t-shirts, our sweaters, our big socks, for them to survive for the night until... And, and then when until morning and then now when morning comes we can know what to do whether we shall go and buy baby clothes she's already snoring see this is a this is mommy's sweater <laughs> it's oversized it's looking like a dress to her and it has reminded me those days the first day they slept in my house they slept in oversized clothes, oversized t-shirts, oversized sweaters, oversized socks. My only concern at that minute was, are the kids safe now? Because remember, they were in a bad place. I will put a link to the full story so that those who cannot relate the story of where they are coming from, you can be able to watch that on our YouTube channel, Touching Lives Through Love. Just go there, touching lives through love. You'll see a lot of our videos, a lot of our videos, touching lives through love. So, that has reminded me those days. And I thought, let me do something, a small video for you. I want, I want to, to turn the camera so that you can see how she's sleeping. Now she sleeps like a little tiny princess. Now the girl is happy. The car is peaceful. All of them, the three of them, they are at peace. They are happy. They are glowing. They are beautiful. They are cute. They have become sharp. They even know their rights. They know to ask, Mommy, I want this. Mommy, I want this. Mommy, I want that. And I'm so happy. I'm so happy to see God entrusting these three souls to me. These three destinies to me. I have walked the journey with them since the year 2020. I have seen them grow. I have seen them meet milestones. I have seen them struggle to shade off the old self, to shade off some personalities they had picked up when in the slum, to shade off some characters they had picked when they were in the slum. And now they are becoming the sweetest kids you can ever have. I love these girls. I love them. They spice up my life. They make my life so sweet and so spiced up. I love them. I love them. So let me turn the camera. i show you how she's sleeping like a small, cute princess. Don't mind my small bedroom. And don't mind the color blue on my bedroom. I hate it. Ooh, I hate it. I wish I can get money to repaint the entire house. I came into this house and I found the people who are living here before me, the people who had rented the house before me, they had uh, 
preferred this bedroom to be painted blue. I don't like it. When I get money, I will change the color. So don't mind the color blue. It's also a color I don't like on in my bedroom, but do I have a choice for now? The color will not make me not sleep. <laughs> so let me show you how our cute princess is sleeping. So don't mind my small bedroom as I show. Don't mind my small bed. Don't mind anything. You just concentrate on looking at how God can change and transform a life and make this girl sleep so soundly on this bed. Can I tell you a story before I flip the, fa the camera? When I picked these girls from the slum, when I picked them, they were, um, oh, definitely they were sleeping on the floor there in the slum. So, you know, on the floor, you roll however you want. You roll from one side to the other before morning comes. There is no falling because you are on the floor already. So, when they came and they started living with us, that's the first time they tasted how it felt like sleeping on a bed. So, when they were very new, hey, this story is bringing a lot of flashbacks. <laughs> the flashbacks of that time in 2020. So when they would go to sleep, eh? when they go to sleep, eh? they would, uh, they would, uh, they would uh, sleep and fall from the bed. All of them were sleeping on the, the bottom bed. There's no way I would have put them on the top bed because it would have been dangerous. So all of them, I had put them on the bottom bed to first train them how to sleep on bed. Can you imagine being trained to how to sleep on bed? Because they would sleep, roll and roll, just like they're used to, and then unfortunately they would fall. So we used to have night shifts. Me, my 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 big daughter Abby, and our house manager, we would have we, we used to have shifts. And what we would do would sleep two hours, two hours, two hours. So after two hours, would put alarms. After two hours, mm -hmm. somebody wakes up, it's your turn, go and check on the girls. Have they fallen on the floor? Pick them from the floor, put them back on bed and cover them. Then we sleep another two hours and the alarm rings again. It is time for another person. They wake up, they go and check on the girls. They find they have fallen on the floor and put them back on bed and we'll do like that until until morning has come anyway those are just but very true <laughs> behind cutting sacrifices we've been making as a family to have uh, the blessing of having these girls together i thank god it's not me it's god it's the grace of god because i always say god would have chosen these girls to be rescued by somebody who is so rich they would have gone to a very Mm, parental, a very big parental home they would have been in a place whereby they are taken care of better than I am doing so I feel humbled that God has entrusted me with three destinies so I'm giving these experiences with a lot of humility with a lot of humility God knows my heart God knows my heart so today we laugh at it. So one day I'll, we'll make a story with these girls when we are laughing at it. So today we laugh at it. We laugh, we laugh. And then we are like, you guys, why were you falling? Why were you falling from the bed? So today we make stories. We laugh about it. And we thank God because today they no longer fall. That's why our doctor can sleep on the top bed. They no longer fall down. They have now known how to sleep on a bed. They know how to make their bed. They know how to have good beddings, a good mattress, a good bed, good blanket, a warm blanket, and all that. So now they are blessed. They are no longer there. I'm giving you the story of the year 2020. So they used to fall down, fall down every day, every night. One night they would fall from the bed to the floor severally until now we figured out you know if we if we let them sleep on bed the normal way somebody sleeps like this along the bed they fall too often they fall so and imagine they fall and continue sleeping it's not like, like they fall and wake up or wake up and cry no they fall and continue sleeping can you imagine poverty can 
push you to a very ugly corner. They were just used to hardship. So they would fall, they would fall and continue sleeping. So you'll find them on the floor, still sleeping and snoring, and you put them back. So we figured out a way and we thought, let's now make them be sleeping across the bed. You know, across the bed, so that at least the length is big. They can, when they roll, they can just move from one side to the other, from one side to the other. And that's how we we managed it for the third time and even as i do this video please allow me to appreciate my my biological daughter our big sister in absentia she's not at home she is uh, she is in school she is in school but i want to appreciate her in absentia because these girls came and started sleeping in her bedroom from day one they started sleeping in her bedroom from day one and this is the bedroom of a teenager we all know how teenagers are so sensitive we all know how teenagers are so selfish with their space with their things we all know how it is for a teenager intruding into your teenagers bedroom we know what it means for those who have had teenagers and this is a teenager who has been the only child, the only child for 14 years. So everything to herself, everything to herself. But she was so selfless. She was so selfless to a point when I brought the girls to her bedroom, she didn't mind. She actually loved them. Sometimes I always say, even in the other previous videos, I feel like my biological daughter, Abigail, loves these girls more than I love them. She loves them. So she, she was happy to see them. Because remember when we were going to the slum, when we were meeting them in the slum, we would see how they are suffering. I was going to the slum with Abigail. So she would see how they are suffering. And when, the, when she saw them coming to our home to be living with us, she was so happy. She felt, oh, mommy, thank you for rescuing these girls. So the girls came and started sleeping in her bedroom. And then, why I want to appreciate my daughter so much, she was among the shift team members, the, the night shift members who would wake up at night to go and take the girls from the floor and take them back to, to bed, that's one. But then, my daughter was so patient with these girls. Remember, their girls were coming from a background of being abused. They are so fearful in their mind so they used to wet the bed. All three of them were wetting the bed badly. They would wet the bed until in the morning you're wondering. You'd hold them, the, 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 the bed sheets like this and they're dripping water. You know the bed would be so wet. But I thank God because somebody who saw our video on Tuko that time, the video by Lynn Googie, I shared with them, and then they were like, Gladys, don't worry. Those girls are wetting the bed because they are coming from a disturbed home, from a, 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 an abused home, the, the, the abusive home, I mean. They are coming from, they are fearful. They are not okay. When you see a baby wetting the bed beyond the age they are supposed to be doing that, it means that child is not okay, is tortured, is not stable, and all that, and all that. So just be patient with them. With time, once they feel they are safe and secure, the waiting of the bed is going to stop. I thank God that I got that advice. And for sure, the time they felt safe and secure, the waiting of the bed stopped. It literally stopped. Imagine it stopped. Today nobody wets the bed. It stopped. It stopped stopped we were surprised because it used to be so nasty remember i picked them on may 3rd 2020 the month of may date 3 2020 during that time here in kenya it's at it's a, it's a bit rainy so the the beddings would not dry because outside it's raining until now one of my friends was so touched and bought for me extra mattress 
and extra beddings. And also, I remember she also bought for me the the mattress cover, actually. The mattress cover. So now I would put the mattress cover so that now the, it's waterproof. So the, the, when they wet, it could not penetrate to the mattress. And that one saved me big deal. Thank you so much. I thank you. May God bless everybody that supported us. That's our story and supported us in one way or another. I remain grateful to you to today. I cannot forget you are our angels. God used you to encourage me, to support me, to stand by my family, to just tell me it's going to be okay because it was not easy. Remember as a single mom, I've been a single mom of one child. Now God added me three more. So I'm a single mom of four. By God's design. I cannot say by default. I can only say by God's design. So how was I to navigate through it all? My God, it's not easy. Even to date, it's still not easy. But by the grace of God, we are managing. I still have the girls in my house until when God wants them to be with me. If they are going to be adults in my house, if they are going to be to get married off from my house, I have decided to allow God's will to happen. I'm not in a hurry. I'm only a vessel in God's hand to be used as God desires to change, transform, and touch the lives of these girls. So I don't know. I had not planned to do all this story. But the sweater brought a lot of flashback. Even now I can remember a lot of things. Let me not say all of them. I'll do a video and say them later. But for now, <laughs> let's stop it there. I was to flip the camera and show you how the beautiful princess is now sleeping like a little tiny, beautiful, cute princess. Let me flip the camera for you. So this is my little tiny bedroom those are my shoes that's where I arrange them they're quite a number I thank God they're quite a number so I want to show you how our baby is sleeping <laughs> look at her so we threw the those two pillows we threw them on the other side because she doesn't use pillows but now see she has turned now she has come to sleep on mommy's pillow <laughs> Sleeping on mommy's pillow. You see this? I'm telling you it was hot. These are what I'm telling you. The fleece, the, the small light fleece blankets that we were using for the night. Because we could not withstand the heat of the heat of the night. But now it is raining. Even as I'm recording this video, it is raining, raining, raining. We are happy. We are grateful to God. And we thank God for the rain. It has been so, so hot. And that's how our beautiful tiny princess ended up wearing the big sweater. Mommy's sweater. And it is that sweater that has brought a lot of memories that I'm sharing with you now. <laughs> Anyway, let's give God thanks. Let's tell God thank you for the far he has brought us and for the good things he's doing with my babies. <laughs>